looking to see world. Hey, look at all of us. We're all like, and you noticed it earlier today. What did we do? But, but this is not what we were all wearing. Earlier. This isn't what we were all wearing, but it still fits though. Look. Yeah. We're all color, like we all woke up and we're all color coordinated today. Gray and blue. He changed out of the shirt that he had on. Yeah, he had a little bit more blue on. Hey, we're all wearing jeans too. Us three are wearing jeans. It's because it's flipping freezing today. No, I not. always wear jeans. <laughs> so we're heading into SeaWorld. We're going to go have some fun. We're going to go eat. And what are we doing? Mm, we're going to try to see Jack Hanna. And Jack Hanna is going to be speaking about some of his experiences with wildlife. And I mean, he has a, he got a snow leopard with him. So like, it's I don't think he's going to have a snow leopard though with his presentation, but maybe. I hope so. It's my favorite animal, so I'm hoping. So let's get in. We had to park all the way toward the back of the parking lot, so that might not be a good sign. Um, I'm guessing we're going to have to like wait, get to the Jack Hanna talk. 45 minutes early. We're gonna go eat first though because it's almost lunchtime and we're dying. Yummy. So it's time to go get some food. Good. Mom got wings from, what's it called? Is it Steve? Uh, Fireside? Um, Is that Fireside Grill? I don't know, it's right, right, it's like one of the first restaurants when you're coming in. It's got a bar to it too, so it's like one of the only ones with a bar with it. And then we went to Voyagers, because I feel like we always go to Voyagers, because you get a lot of food here, so. I got the half smoked chicken and fries, and it's tasty. And I don't know what Dalton got. I got the signature spare ribs with fries, and the ribs. Yummy. And I got the rib sampler, which I usually give dad my sausage, but yeah. Yeah, I already ate it. <laughs> so you get a lot of food here though. Like I feel like at Voyagers you get a lot of food. You get the wings because of the keto diet. And so it's really tasty for a keto diet. I mean, I don't, I'm sure the barbecue sauce isn't keto friendly, so. <laughs> But it's keto-ish, because it's chicken. The fries definitely aren't keto-friendly. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We have our water bottles here. So it's crazy busy here today, you guys. Like it's, um, we had to park. I think I already said we parked like way back in the parking lot and then. Inside was very, very busy. Inside, inside you that barely had seating inside, so. Yeah, we had, so I don't even want to tell you guys this because this is our thing, but outside of Voyagers, they have seating in the back. And that's where we're at and not that many people eat out here well, at least when we're here we don't see a lot of people eating out here um it's, it's really busy inside and it's really calm and quiet out here and it's fun like the scenery and stuff is just kind of fun um i don't know i like it out here right like it's a good place to come and just calm down and, and eat done with lunch still kind of eating here oh do we lose mom nope there she is heading over to uh the jack Hanna talk uh, we gotta we gotta walk a little ways. Um, we're gonna try to get in line and see if we can actually get to it because we I'm guessing it's gonna be really packed out. Today's the last day that Jack Hanna is gonna be here doing his talk. Um, there's one at 1:30 and one at 4 o'clock. We're gonna try to do the 1:30 show and it is what is it? Is it quarter till? A little after one. Okay, so it's almost one o'clock. So. I'm guessing there's probably already, already going to be a line, so we'll see if we actually get there to get in line. So I hope we're in the right spot. There's two entrances into the theater. And so I think Margie said that the other one says reserved seating entrance. So we came over to this other one. Not a bad line. There are quite a few people here already. So hopefully it's a pretty big theater. So hopefully we'll get into um, into there. And I'm not sure if we're allowed to video or photo or anything like that. So we'll find out when we get in there, I guess. Good news about this. Um theater is that there are bathrooms on the inside so you don't have to leave the theater in order to go. So what are you saying? So you can get here early then you mean? No, don't get here early. 
Don't. But you gotta get here early to get. We're here early. Oh, get here. Yeah. Well, I don't mean. If that is the reason, I'm talking about bathrooms. Right, but I'm saying it's good that there's a bathroom inside because you can get here early. Yeah. Then you can yeah. get inside and you don't have to worry about. Here. You can sit in there for half an hour waiting for the show, and not have to leave the theater to go find a bathroom because there's a bathroom in there. Yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh boy. especially the ostrich kicking me. <laughs> I would put them in the hospital though, so don't get around the ostrich. <laughs> and then I didn't know they kicked sideways, that's the problem. But anyway, it's great to be back here, everybody. I was, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the Central Florida Zoo up the road there. In 1973, that's where I came to build the zoo and open the zoo, so I got to come down here when this whole place, beautiful place, opened up. So I always love to come here, everyone, because SeaWorld, for example, I've been taking uh, notes on this for many years. In the 55 years, this beautiful place here has rescued in 55 years 36,000 animals and put it back in their natural habitat. So they should have an animal call. The first animal I have here, and I don't practice this everybody, so I never know what the first animal is. <laughs> I know one thing, some of the last animals you're going to have are going to be cheetahs tonight. Oh my gosh, that's, that's my, I have a lot of animals. All of them are favorite, yes. But this animal here, having served in the military during the Vietnam War, I can tell you this, this bird here, the bald eagle, folks, is our bird of America. And back in the old days, folks, when I was first getting in the zoo over 30, 40 years ago, when the eagles hatch, the eagle starts flying, they do not have a white head. Some people didn't mean to, they might be hunting, they take the animal down, they don't think they're doing that, even though, you know, uh, whatever. But if anyone is caught doing something to a bald eagle, it's about 5,000 bucks now, and they're going into jail uh, with our national bird, which is a pretty good law. Now this bird here does have that white head as it gets older. If you look at that foot there, or her beautiful arm there, she has a, a glove there that's kind of, not just leather there, there's a little bit of tin inside there. There's a thousand pounds of pressure per square inch in that claws right there. A thousand pounds per square inch that animal has on those claws. And that's really how the animal really hunts as well. Not with the beak necessarily until he wants to eat, but that's those claws are what he keeps the eagle alive. So the bald eagle is our national bird, and I must tell you, I, I get to see those a lot when they're in Montana, where I live part-time. You get to see those animals start flying when they don't have a white head, and now they're really protected because most people know that that is a bald eagle. So, And by the way, this place right here, I don't know how many it is now, it has to be probably well over, I'd say well over 100 over the last few years. They've actually taken here, they've been injured and stuff like that, and putting back in the wild. SeaWorld has saved our national bird by the hundreds over the last probably 30 years. Thank you guys so much for doing that, our national bird. Now, don't worry everybody, some people say, oh my gosh, it's being held. Folks, the sloth lives upside down. He lives upside down. And a lot of uh, veterinarians have looked at this all night long, they're upside down, with their head down there. It's amazing to watch this animal. So don't worry, he's, he loves me. He's a character, this, this animal. The sloth, and I'm gonna let her talk about it in just a minute. <laughs> uh, the sloth, that's a two-toed sloth, by the way. She's got two toes, toes up there. And there's also a three-toed sloth. It's a different color and a little bit bigger. On the Letterman Show, I was telling the same thing I just told you, the two-toed, the three-toed sloth. He says, well, what's the difference? One toe, you idiot. I just told you the two-toed, three toes. <laughs> but anyway, and you can see her, she'll put her hand up there. Look at the hair that this animal has, too. And the, the thing about it, the thing about it, everybody, is what's hard about this animal when you go over there to find them, especially uh, maybe they, they, they turned, rain grows on, or rain hits them, and all this stuff goes on their hair there. Uh, it looks like a big old green, go and tell about that. Yeah, they, they actually grow algae in their hair. Algae, yeah. Yeah, which serves two purposes. One, it's a great snack for a lazy animal. If they're feeling too lazy to reach out and grab a leaf off of a tree, for example, they can just reach back and scratch the algae off their own fur and snack on that. Yeah, kind of gross. 
But it has another important purpose. It helps to keep them safe from predators. It's camouflage. So obviously this animal here is not well uh, matched or suited for a rainforest in terms of his coloration. But if he were living in the rainforest where it rains very frequently, and he moves very infrequently, that algae would grow and turn his body green, and then he can blend in and his predators can't see him. Yeah, and this animal also, they say, it goes way back until the prehistoric animals, that they were weighing 500 pounds or something back then. They found the bones and stuff. You know, the, this animal was way, way back. Some people think they can have him as a pet. They used to years and years ago. I remember that uh, many years ago, 30, 40 years ago. But then that's been stopped because that animal can take your arm apart in one split second. Those teeth are something else as well. So that was all stopped in the pet shops and things. So I just wanted to show you an animal that does go back thousands of years. So thank you for bringing Slowpoke with us. All right. I shouldn't say that Slowpoke. I'm sorry. Now this animal here, I'm going to let Susie Rapp, who's been to the zoo for 40 something years, <laughs> she knows a great deal about animals. You think it's a porcupine, don't you? But it's not not a porcupine jack this is actually what we call it a kidnap and for those of you who've been following the bushfires in australia that's where the echidnas are from and this is one of the few animals that's actually surviving those fires and one of the things that we didn't really know too much about them but these animals were, are burying themselves into the ground and they're oh, capable how, how of lowering their body temperature and that is what has been saving them from these fires. Echidnas are also what we call a monotreme. A monotreme is an egg-laying mammal. Can you guys think of the other egg-laying mammal? Monopus. Monopus, you're exactly right. So echidnas lay eggs, they incubate them, and then the baby hatches, and this is my favorite. Does anybody out there know what a baby echidna is called? A puggle. A puggle. I think that's the cutest thing in the world. But as Jack said, he said it kind of looks like a porcupine. And when people, when we take Edna out, people do think she looks like a porcupine. Her quill, she does have quills all over, just like a porcupine. They are used as a defense. The difference is a porcupine's quills are barbed on the end, and they don't shoot their quills like many people think. But if a predator were to come on to and grab a porcupine, a porcupine's gonna back up right into their predator and then those quills are gonna release in their mouth. Hers are very sharp, Edna's, the echidnas, are very, very sharp, but as you can see, they don't release. They're not barbed on the end, but they do protect her from predators she would have in Australia and New Zealand where she's found. There's two different species, the long-beaked and the short-beaked. She's actually the short-beaked. She has no teeth in that mouth. She's kind of in the anteater family. They use, oftentimes call them spiny anteaters. Um, and she has this long tongue that will go out and collect all the little insects that she's looking for. They do lay eggs. It looks like it's just an old bird, isn't it? Well, this is one of the most prehistoric birds in the world. This bird, the uh, Seriyama, and this animal here has to eat, he always eats snakes or lizards. But wait, the kids, this is a rubber one, don't get excited. But they always take, find a rock in the wild, they find the rock and they take the... <laughs> Kid, it's a rubber lizard, okay, please. But anyway, this is a prehistoric bird, everybody, one of the oldest in the, in the world. I mean, not, I'm not his age, I'm talking about how long they've been on Earth. Bam, golly, dang. <laughs> don't worry about it, it's a rubber lizard, for God's sakes, it's not real, man. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Are you upset today? <laughs> and by the way, people who fly out there, don't worry, because he did it only one time years ago. So no, if he lands on your head, don't worry. He won't beat your head in. <laughs> this is one that, like I said, been around the earth longer than anybody, any bird that I know. He had the long legs like a flamingo or something. What are you doing? Come here. <laughs> Take, eat your lizard. No, don't do that. Okay, now, okay. <laughs> are you upset today? It's, it's a <laughs> oh my gosh. I wonder what this is. This is this is something that I took on a plane. My wife and I tried to Susie and I tried to take to California to go to do a show there. We tried to sneak this on the airplane. But she had a Susie, my wife wore the thing when you you're pregnant, a big old blouse, and we hid the, the kangaroo underneath the blouse 
And we halfway across, though, the thing started kicking, and the lady on the plane said, oh my gosh, are you delivering? I said, I said no, ma'am, it's a kangaroo. She goes, what, a kangaroo on the plane? I'm sorry, I snuck it on here, but you can't stop the plane, so anyway, she made all the way, though, with the kangaroo. That's right, Jack, this is a joey, or a baby kangaroo, and this is Bindi, and Bindi is about nine months old. What a lot of people don't realize about the kangaroo family, or the macropod family, <coughs> is when they're born, they're about the size of a jelly bean, and they look like a little worm, and they crawl into their mother's pouch, and that's where they grow. They attach to a teat, so they're not able to come and go as they please. They're stuck there, and the milk just drips in that baby's mouth, and that's where that baby develops. That's where it gets its ears, that's where it gets its feet, its tail, its fur, its eyes, everything. And, and that's the true definition of a marsupial is the major development of the baby is done outside of the womb. Because of that, marsupial mothers do not have to be very maternal. These babies are very self-sufficient in those pouches and oftentimes the babies will unfortunately fall out of the mother's pouch or even in a time of stress or danger where a, an adult kangaroo has to get away from danger, they'll even empty their pouch. And so at the Columbus Zoo, periodically we'll get baby joeys that need some tender loving care, some extra hand raising, and Bindi was no exception to that. And so we took Bindi and she's gonna eventually go down into our kangaroo exhibit at the Columbus Zoo. One of the things, the gray kangaroo, which is what Bindi is, is the second largest kangaroo. There's about 60 different species of kangaroos and wallabies, 40 of those being wallabies, about 20 being kangaroos. One of the most often asked questions I get is, what's the difference between a wallaby and a kangaroo? Not much. The main difference is the size. Wallabies just are smaller than the kangaroos. When Bindi's full grown being a female, she's not gonna get near as big as a male gray, which a male gray kangaroo could get about 150 pounds where a red male kangaroo could get as much as 200, maybe even more, and be six foot tall. Being a female, she's probably only gonna be between about four and five feet tall. But one thing kangaroos have is an enormous back foot, and that's how they got classified as macropods. I'm gonna show that foot. She's right about that. That kangaroo can take out a whatever animal it wants to. They, they get cornered, they take that big leg there, like Susie said, that claw right there is long, and that thing is trying to get him down, a big dog or whatever it is, it's gone. That's how they kick him. And you know what we call a baby kangaroo is a joey, a female kangaroo is a flyer, a male is a boomer, and they all live in a group called a mob. This animal here that you try to film in the wild, it's almost impossible. little guy. This is Yang. And I know you know what Yang is. Yang is an otter. He's a special otter. He's an Asian small clawed otter. There are 13 different species of otters, with the Asian small clawed being the smallest. This is actually a welcomed animal in Asia. The fishermen have really grown to like these animals because they'll train them to chase the fish into the fish net. So they're very successful. Well, Brandy decided, what a great thing, let's teach Yang to fish. They are very smart animals having over 12 different vocalizations. You see, Yang is picking up the fish and putting them in the fish nets. Very smart animals. I mean, when you're training these guys, it's almost painful because you can see that brain just working so hard. But one of the other things which makes us realize this animal is a very intelligent animal, they're tool users. And when they've been observed in the wild, they'll see otters finding little stones or pebbles. The Asian small clawed otter is the most aquatic of all the otters. Hence the name small clawed. They're little claws, you can barely even see them, they're so tiny, because their feet are really designed for swimming all the time. But what we noticed in the wild with these animals, they'll find these pebbles or stones and it looks like they're rolling them around, which they've 
Yang will do that. I don't know if the cameras are up close. That is how he would carry him back to where he wanted to go. Then he's going to use that stone to crack open clams or any type of crustacean that he gets because he's not strong enough to do it himself. So very, very intelligent animals. Um, he's having a lot of fun out here showing you eating his fish and rolling his stone at the same time. I'm, I'm going to see if he'll vocalize for you. One of 12 vocalizations. You can imagine what the drive with Yang is. He's very particular. If he makes a mess in his crate, he wants to make sure we clean it up like that. And he will scream until you clean it up. A wonderful animal. Thank you, Brandon. I'll tell you, to try to film them in the wild is almost impossible. Those animals can hear you a mile away. It's amazing. Oh, I'm going to let you talk about this. This is Jax, one of Jack's favorites. And not really. No, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. No. He loves the bush babies. Well, no, last year the animal jumped on my hat, which is okay, but then he went to the bathroom all over it, so <laughs> and that, and I had to go to the airplane and I tried to get it from smelling. But this is known as a bush baby, and this is Poe. Po, bush babies are also known as Galagos, and there's about 20 different species of Galagos. They are living throughout Africa. And they got the name bush baby because they make several vocalizations. But one of those vocalizations is that of a baby crying. And being that they live out in the bush, they ended up with the nickname Bush Baby. Paul here, if you notice, is a great jumper. In fact, bush babies are known to jump 20 feet in the wild. And one of the reasons Jack doesn't like the fact that Poe's jumping on him, bush babies are what we call pee washers. So you and I put our hands underneath the sink and wash our hands with water. Well, these guys wash their, they actually pee on their hands. And there's a reason for that though, and it's very, very important for the bush baby. Then when they hop from tree to tree to tree, they know how to get back because their scent is marked on all the different branches that they hopped on. So there's a good purpose for it. I know Jack's not real happy that it's all over his safari outfits and <laughs> his hats and everything. Um, but it, it, it's for a good reason. This is a penguin, isn't it? Which one is this one? There's so a lot of different this, penguins, tell them. This is trout, and trout is my favorite penguin of all time. But trout here is an African penguin, also known as the donkey penguin, because they actually bray like a donkey. I don't know if he'll do it for us today, but we can wait and see. But being an African penguin, he does like that warm weather, so they're going to live along the coast of South Africa. Usually when we think of penguins, we think of the cold weather, but there's actually 17 different species of penguins and only five live in cold weather. And a lot of time on commercials around the holidays, you might see penguins and polar bears together, but that's all fake because penguins live south of the equator, so you would never see that. Penguins, though, they are excellent swimmers. So you can see Trout has that smaller head and the bigger body, so he has that torpedo shape, which helps him fly through the water. So they can swim about 20 to 25 miles per hour, which is super impressive. Being a one that swims in the water. He does like to eat fish. Trout's favorite fish happens to be trout. That's not how he got his name. It was just, he was just lucky. But they will swallow those fish whole. So inside their beak, they have these little um, prongs that when they swallow the fish, it slices it um, when they do eat it. But when they do swim, they want to be able to see underwater. So they actually have a third eyelid. So just like if you're swimming and you wear goggles, Trout has built-in goggles so he can see. He is also covered in feathers, because penguins, they are birds. So these are just tiny little feathers. So in one square inch, it covers about 70 feathers, which is super impressive. So they have more feathers per square inch than any other bird. Another cool fact about penguins is if I turn him around and you can see his belly here, if you see the spots on his belly, that's just like his fingerprint. So no two humans have the same fingerprint, just like no two uh, penguins have the same spot pattern. They have, what, more feathers per square inch than any bird in the world. That's what's amazing, like you said, that's amazing. They are.
and really, in all seriousness, everybody, it's just like if you go to Montana and you see a, a, a bear, or you go to Africa or wherever you see a cheetah, if you come around a corner and it's standing there, do not run. The animal will come after you, not necessarily to eat you, just to knock you down. So it's a, it's a hard thing to do. So my wife Susie and I, hiking in uh, Montana, we live part-time out there, came around there, there's a big old bear standing there. We didn't run, but the bear usually runs away. But the main thing of any animal like that will, will start running after you, not trying to eat you, just to chase you, and use it knock you down. But the cheetah is amazing. You're one of the fastest land mammal in the world there. That animal is amazing to watch. It really is over there. Uh, that tail you see on the cheetah, when that cheetah can go like this, going 50, 60, you know, how many, how many seven, who knows, 70 miles an hour, some people say, it can go like this, it can turn like that, just like that. Not like a car has to go like this. The, the animal goes, puts that tail up and just goes left, I don't know if you can show the, um, the feet there. You'll see the, 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 the claws on the animal's foot there. Look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? It's not like a lot of cats, is it? No. That helps that animal with speed as well. And again, the tail is used for that. Of course, that camouflage of that hair there is something else. So this animal here, a lot of cats hunt at nighttime. This cat here, um, mainly in the daytime. The cat gets down the grass out there in Africa, and you can't even see the animal. And boy, he just pops up a little bit. I've always filmed it twice. When that animal starts running, it's like a bullet. And the same, the thing about the cheetah is, folks, it's a very weak cat. It's not like a lion or a tiger. When I see those animals, or you've seen them before, it takes one second for them when they go to, to eat something or to whatever it might be. But the cheetah, a lot of times, about at least half the time, the animal gets up and gets away. So the cheetah is one of the only cats in the world that cannot just grab the rear end or grab the back or whatever. It has to grab the neck. It has to do that because it's the only way the cheetah can, can get his meals. But they are an incredible animal. And by the way, back in the Egyptian area in northern Africa, this animal here was used as like there were no guns in, I guess, bulls and arrows, is what I've read from, or heard from people that know way, way thousands of years ago. The cheetah was an animal that kept them alive. They would, they would take the cheetah to hunt, and then that cheetah would take something down. I'll get out of here. Jeez. He didn't do that yesterday. Why, why don't you look out there? Jeez. Anyway, uh, the cheetah was used as a hunting tool to eat and, and live, live what the people used it. Uh, the, the people there in the Africa many, many thousands of years ago, the cheetah was very important. There weren't bows and arrows there, there weren't anything like guns. So the cheetah was really kept a lot of people alive. But they are a phenomenal animal, everybody, they really are. And now a lot of them are not hunted anymore for their coats, which are for, you know, different types of uh, dresses, and uh, not dresses, just jackets or, or clothing, let's put it that way. Um, but the cheetah is a, a, an animal that goes way back thousands of years, like I said, and used not necessarily as pets, but animals that uh, help hunt for them. They didn't have the guns to kill animals or to hurt animals, whatever you want to say, I don't like that word, uh, to, to, to have food. So there he is, everyone, beautiful cheetahs. Thank you so much for Bush Gardens for coming up with it. I just love the cheetah. I love all animals, by the way. Thank you guys a lot. That tail is important for that cat. That cat's going up for speeds. That thing is just like a, just like a wing on an airplane. That thing can turn it, that tail helping turns all the time. It really is something else. That is tremendous. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I really appreciate it. And thank you, SeaWorld, for supporting so many animals and keeping some out of extinction. I really appreciate it. God bless SeaWorld. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun, a lot of information. Um, I don't know, it was really cool. If you like animals, like your family's really gonna like it. If um, you don't like animals, you're not gonna like it. I don't know. What'd you? Why did you like it? I liked it because it like, well, it showed the animals, showed them doing like certain like different activities, sort of. They. Uh, I was pretty impressed that they got they. We got to hear some of the animals, like what noise, like sounds they make. I was pretty impressed that they were able to actually do that. I, I didn't know that an otter made a little chirping noise. Did the otter make a chirping noise? Yeah, otters it chirp. like a squeaky toy. And so, yeah, so, but like yeah, they also said it makes, it has 12 different vocalizations. Um, they're very smart, they're the only animal that really uses, that uses tools. I was excited that we got to see a cheetah at the end. I was sad that they, I mean, they showed him in the advertisement holding a snow leopard, so when they said a big, they said at the beginning there was gonna be a big surprise. I was hoping that it was gonna be the snow leopard, but it wasn't, it was a cheetah. There but I still like cheetahs. cheetahs. Yeah, two cheetahs. I'm still excited about that, but I would have I liked to have seen a snow leopard. Yeah. We have to actually 
watched you walk. <laughs> what did you think of the show? It was good. I, it was better than I expected. I wasn't expecting all the animals and stuff. I wasn't sure if it was just going to be him just talking about his experiences or what, but it was kind of like show and tell. It was cool. Yeah. I, another thing I kind of thought was cool was, well, kind of weird a little bit. He didn't talk a lot about a lot of the animals except for the cheetah. Like he put input on it, but he didn't really talk a lot really about like it. the other zookeepers. Like, that is true. And that's... It was a bald eagle. I thought, I thought that was cool. I decided to go to the clearance store and look around for a little bit, so I started this way too early. <laughs> what? I started it too early. We're not even to the store yet. Well, we're almost there. Okay. Like we're right here now. Uh, Does it doesn't exactly say clearance store, it just says sale and a little sign. But you got these little watches. Wait. We're gonna go pet stingrays! Woo! Yay! What was that? That's not. I don't like to pet stingrays. It's not my favorite thing to do. I'm but going along because it's family fun. Yay! Hey, Dalton. I forget what it's called. Uh, I think it's just called Orca Encounter. Yeah, Orca Encounter. I think. I uh, suggested the splash zone. I was voted out. Well, no. We said you could sit in the splash zone, but the rest of us are not going to sit in the splash zone. <laughs> One, because it's cold today. Two, because Orca water smells icky. Well, it's ocean water, so I would assume so. Well, do you know what they do in the in the ocean water? Yes, I know what they do in the ocean water. What do you think you're swimming in when you go they, to the beach? They pee pee and caca in it. What do you think you're swimming in when you go to the beach? You're the one who swims in Do you know, I don't want to talk about this. All I know is I don't want to be in the splash zone. <laughs>
the soda. Well, we're gonna get food and then we're gonna go to the pass holder lounge there and get free soda. Free soda. Free soda. Woo! Cup. So the rest of the crew is in the bathroom right now, but I'm gonna take this time to say that last time we were in a show, it ended up that we were like, we were like, we couldn't really get out because it was like so slow and everybody was so packed in. But, no, be serious of it. But this time, I would type, like, we sat inside and we got out of the side, so I would highly suggest doing that just to avoid being jostled too much. And. What are we talking about? Dad, what are you gonna get? Um, probably chicken. Ooh. Probably chicken. <laughs> I'll probably get the um, steak thing again. What about you, Dom? Uh, what? What are you gonna eat? I don't know. My brain is wide. So, we're done eating. I think we're going home. It was a fun day. We got to see a show. We got to two. Two shows. I forgot about that. It's the Orca one and the Jack Hannah, Hannah show. I'm out. We ate two meals, which were fairly good. That guy looks scary. Not, not really that scary. It's like how it goes. It goes like, Ooh. good day. Everybody have fun. Everybody have fun. Happy New Year. We hope this. We hope this video helps you to nurture and grow your foster and adoptive families. See you next time.